Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Meredith and today I'm going to be starting another reading vlog. So this is just going to be a chill weekly reading vlog for Eurovisionathon. I will link all the information for that down below. That is just a fun readathon where you read a book from every country that is in Eurovision. And the scoring is really fun because it works that you get points for each uh, country that makes it into the final and then of course the country that wins. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. I'm not participating to win or anything because yeah, I'm barely going to be <laughs> reading any books. I just think it's really fun and I really like Helen's channel so I wanted to support her. So yeah, uh, this week that's just what I'm going to be doing. So I sort of have a set TBR but I don't know if I'm going to get to everything so I'll just let you know what I'm reading as I go. Now I'm just going to talk about the book that I'm reading for Ireland. which is All the Bad Apples by Maura Fally Doyle. And I was a bit naughty. I've read about half of it and I haven't said anything. So I thought, you know what, I'll just do a quick update now so I can actually talk about this before I finish it because I'm going to read a bunch more today. I feel like I'm just really enjoying this and it's such an easy read. So this is a contemporary set in, is it 2012? Yeah, so it's set in 2012 and it follows a young girl who has kind of been raised by one of her older sisters. She has two, they're twins, and one basically raised her, but she's sort of closer with the other one. Basically her father is very Catholic and she is a lesbian. And so she doesn't feel close with the sister who raised her because she doesn't really want her to come out and wants her to be conservative and kind of what their father wants, even though he basically abandoned them after the mother passed away. And basically the main character ends up accidentally sort of coming out as gay at her on her birthday. And that's when the sister that she's closer with disappears. And it is believed that she has committed suicide and everyone believes that she's dead except for our main character. And she ends up finding a letter from that sister kind of talking about their past and this journey that her sister has to kind of go on to find her and basically it turns out that this family kind of has this curse on them and it's kind of like a lot of the women that are bad apples in the family are cursed and basically the twin sister is wanting to go and fix the curse so that her younger sister who is a main character doesn't end up getting cursed because she's come out as gay she believes that that means that she will be cursed because it's considered bad in their family i'm really really enjoying this i will say i think the writing is quite like a basic it's nothing brilliant in any oh, this feels so harsh i'll tell you why because you are a mean girl you're a bitch i don't know i just think the writing's quite basic um like even just like the first line was so clunky and i was like oof after the funeral, our morning clothes hung out on the line like sleeping bats. It had rained in the cemetery and everything was muddy. Wet grass clung all the way up to our knees and clumps of muck stuck to the heels of our best boots. Like, just not the best writing. But I think that despite the writing, the substance is brilliant. I'm really enjoying it so far. Because you've kind of got this layer of a mystery and wanting to find the sister and learn more about the family history it's really keeping me intrigued and I want to keep learning more I feel like the past is really fascinating that's probably my favorite part of this over the modern day story seeing all of these women being punished for sort of sexuality and not just in terms of like being queer but also just like desire and and acting out on that and being punished for it which I find really interesting it has lots of great relationships between women like whether it be familial or just friends or lovers it's really filled with great female relationships and when i say great they're not all positive they're very complex like i really enjoyed the relationship between our main character and the sister that raised her because it's not a super positive relationship but the sister still basically gave up her life to raise her sister and wants her sister to have all the opportunities that she didn't have but at the same time she's neglecting what her sister actually wants and it's kind of pushing that onto her without asking is that actually what she wants interesting complex relationship and there's there's lots throughout this and positive or negative but just strong interesting relationships which I really appreciate so yeah despite the writing not being super great and some of the characters being a little bit not like two-dimensional but just not the characterization isn't just isn't super 
brilliant in my opinion it's just kind of okay and the writing's okay but it's the substance that I think is really going well like the plot is really interesting also uh one of the uh yesterday I was I showed Liam this cover and I was like do you like the cover and he was like oh yeah I like the colors and I was like I like the peaches on it the peaches it's called all the bad apples and I thought they were peaches <sighs> what are you an idiot sandwich <laughs> So yesterday I became an auntie for the first time on like my side of the family so my sister had her baby yesterday and I'm still just like <clears throat> so yeah anyway I'm super just like excited and over the moon and I got absolutely nothing done yesterday I worked I had to work but like I did nothing like I did no reading I did no <laughs> video stuff I just I had a day to just be happy and yeah I get to meet her tomorrow so I'm very excited about that but today is the last day of this vlog and I have so much I need to do today on top of I work six hours so let's talk about my reading over the last few days because I don't think I've updated in a little bit so I did end up finishing all the bad apples and I'll probably need my notes to talk about this one because boy do I have a lot to say this is definitely a book that would be great for like a book club um because there's just so much to talk about like there's so much to dissect with this one. It's brilliant. So yeah, I have like mixed feelings overall though because I love like what this book was saying. I loved the message. I, I like fully, that's five stars when it comes to what this book was talking about. It's so clever. It's five stars. But the actual like journey of reading this book wasn't five stars. It was like, okay. Like I feel like the story was just a bit disjointed. I feel like it just needed more fleshing out. It probably needed to just be a little bit longer or more focused on certain aspects. So like it starts off like this friendship journey, but then that kind of gets absolutely dropped in the last like 100 pages and it's like a completely different book. And I feel like the friendships didn't really bring a lot to this. Like I feel like obviously at the end it's nice that she has friends and she's made like some new friends, but I feel like it would have been more powerful. It was just her and the character of, What's her name? Ida? I'm pretty sure it was Ida. Um, I don't want to say who Ida is because it's a spoiler. But if it had just been her and Ida going on this journey, I think it would have been a lot more powerful and we would have had more time to focus on that. And it would have been a lot more... I guess the time that we had would have been better used because I feel like the friendship stuff didn't bring anything and it made the story feel a little bit disjointed. Yeah, the actual story is probably more like a four, but like the message is a five. But I think I'm going to... I'm gonna stay on a four. I think that four captures this well. I, I think that this is such a good book and I highly recommend it, but the actual like story was just like, okay. So it's it's a weird one, but the messages, holy dooly, they are so, 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 so good. Like blown away. So this actually reminds me of kind of the messages in House of Snow, which is my favorite book so far this year, because that was talking about how bad it is to not talk about things and how keeping things inside and not talking about them allows things to continue and it just becomes a cycle because no one's breaking the cycle of trauma and this kind of talks about that because it's following women in this family for generations who have been discouraged from talking have had no agency over themselves or their bodies or their own children and how because no one has spoken about it it's just continued because people think, oh, it's just happening to me. And they don't realize that it's this big thing. And through talking, they would understand that this is a huge issue and it's time to break the cycle. But because they're so discouraged from talking and in some instances not even allowed to talk, it just continues. And this story was about breaking that cycle, about talking about your trauma. And it was so powerful in doing that. Like this really, I felt very emotional towards the end of this. I was just like, this, this is powerful shit. But like, it also talks about religion a lot and how 
religion should not impact the state. Like, religion should be a separate thing. It should not be impacting the laws or the way society functions. Like, it should be kept as a completely separate entity and how it doesn't have a place in the state because it is ostracizing people it is harming people it is telling people that they're not worthy it's not allowing people to be who they are it's silencing people and it's really harmful it's just got no place in the new modern world like it's it's not a part of the world that we're creating now that was another thing i really liked about this though like the history and the history of ireland was really interesting to read about because i don't really know anything about irish history and um, it sort of talked about these homes for young girls who got pregnant quite young and they were basically to work there for no pay but they were obviously given food and shelter and they were kept away from their babies after they were born and they were basically just left there to provide for the baby like to give milk and then once they were at a certain age they were often kept away from their own children that's like the most horrific thing i really felt like this book captured that so well like how horrific and cruel it is to separate someone from their own child obviously there are some circumstances where the child is not safe that's different but this was people who could take care of their children and loved their children and the people in this home the nuns deciding no you cannot take care of your child we will put it into an, another family's care or continue to um, care for them here ourselves and brainwash the children essentially and it's disgusting and it's so horrific and I feel like every country has dirty laundry when it comes to history and that's just some of the history in Ireland that I didn't know about and yeah that is so 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 sad and I feel like it also talked about in each of the stories sexuality these women being punished for being sexual and in some cases it was completely done to them like there is a case in this family of rape so please be careful reading this so it's just like they were punished and it wasn't even them that did it like it's it's absurd and yeah being punished for being sexual and for being queer yeah it's absurd and it's absurd that because of the silence you see it's still affecting the character in modern day and she's finally realizing that this isn't okay anymore and we need to talk about this and we need to we need to change it and women should be allowed to express their sexuality in any way that they see fit and they should be able to talk about their experiences and women should be allowed to keep their own babies they shouldn't be ashamed of having children young and they should be able to keep their children so it, yeah it's just masterpiece 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 i am yes gonna settle on four stars i just feel like it was a little bit dramatic in points and, and like i predicted the big twist at the end but i highly recommend this regardless i think this is really important reading and i think it should encourage everyone to learn about their history if you can and know about the women in your history and what they went through and the things that they sacrificed and endured so that you can live today. I do actually really need to complete my book for Australia. G'day mate. Hey. There are you go. Which is my tit and my sister because this is actually one of my prompts for Magical Readathon which is an anthology and I haven't read another anthology this month so I need to read this. But I am like a third of the way through and it's a very quick read. So I should be able to do that after work tonight. Yeah, let's talk about this. Is it nonfiction? I, I think maybe there's some fiction in here as well. I'm not sure. But it's pieces of writing from Indigenous Australian women. Kind of talking about shared experiences and the strength and resilience and the history of being an Indigenous woman in Australia. And I'm 40 pages in and it's already just been so good. Like... It's different from what I normally read when I've read stuff about Indigenous Australians. I think it's really nice to read something that isn't so like academic or like high level. I think this is just like really easy to read and will be good for people who don't necessarily pick up the more like heavier stuff. I think it's nice that there's something by Indigenous women that is just easier to read. But yeah, just not as intense. It's a lot more approachable, which I think is really lovely. And it's got like heaps of art as well. And it's just, it's just like, 
a really pretty nice book. I wanted to read out some quotes. It took me many years to realize the gaps in my knowledge were purposeful, that they were the lasting impacts from the generations before me who were punished for speaking language, separated from their families, and shamed or terrified into hiding traditions and stories deep within themselves. Before working this out, though, I often felt inadequate, like I was failing my ancestors when scattering when stuttering through my perspective of Uncle Charlie Perkins' achievements with the Freedom Rides. Mind you, it was my year 8 history teacher who'd asked me that, singling me out in class in the lone Aboriginal kid, which apparently appointed me as the representative and knowledge keeper for the whole 80,000 years of culture and history. I really loved this section about Australia Day. The most important next step is not just changing the date, but changing how we perceive ourselves and how we relate to one another through our values and respect for differences. But yeah, just there's definitely lots of um, stories of Aboriginal people being so strong and resilient and just stories of power and self-determination. And it's very powerful and I feel like a lot of Indigenous people will be able to read this and feel seen and feel understood and inspired. And I feel like that's such a beautiful thing. And then as a white person reading this can also get another understanding and respect and listen to indigenous voices and see what they are wanting and what they feel. And then I've also been listening to One Hot Italian Summer, which is my book for Italy. Hey, jing -a -dee -jing. it's Dominic the donkey. Jing -a -dee -jing. the Italian Christmas donkey. And this is a contemporary romance about a woman who is an author and she was kind of like almost an author duo with this other lady who passed away in a car accident. She's now lost her spark and inspiration because she feels like a fraud writing without her co-worker. And so her new agent ends up being like, hey, you know, I don't want to like ditch you. So how about we do like a one last ditch effort before I'm going to have to drop you because like this isn't good for me. So how about you go stay at my like villa house in Italy and try and get some inspiration by just having like a holiday and writing there. And she's like sure because I'm, I'm freaking desperate at this stage. And she gets there and her agent's ex-husband ends up being there with their kid because he ended up coming back from a trip early. So their meeting is hilarious because neither knows the other person's there and it's so funny. I feel like the main thing I wanna say is that the guy in this is perfection. Like he is the perfect man. And the guy on the cover of this kills me every time. The full cover? Who allowed this to happen? This is too much. I, I could never read that book. I would just look at it and, and I would die. It's, uh, anyway, I need to stop being creepy. <laughs> but yeah, he is like the perfect man. It's, why are there not more men like this? He's just, he's like so in his feelings. He's so sensitive. He's so caring. He's so mature. He's like an amazing dad. And he's just like, it's too much. And like, he's Italian. I don't know what that's got to do with anything. None of this uh, is making any sense. And I like the character, the female character too. She's pretty cool. I feel like a lot of people can relate to feeling like you're in a rut, not just in creativity, but just in life. We all get in spots, especially when something has happened and we're kind of been through a lot of trauma. It is hard to bounce back. So I feel like she's very relatable and it's easy to be sympathetic for her situation and she seems like a very caring, nice person and you kind of really want her to get her mojo back. It's going to be this really lovely emotional romance as well. Um, so I'm really enjoying it. I'm about halfway through, so I guess I will update you when I finish that.
Hello. Okay, it's been like a week since I last went to clip of this vlog. Let's not talk about it. Let's just, let's just not talk about it, okay? <laughs> I started a second job. I've been so busy. I went and visited my niece and that was like a huge drive. And anyway, it's been, it's been absolutely hectic. Today is my first day where I've had nothing on. It's going to take me a little while to adjust to this huge working schedule because I went from barely working to working all the time. Tilly wants to come in as soon as you do anything in a room with the door closed and Tilly's not allowed in. She doesn't like it. So I better let her in. Also, sorry, this lighting's crap. I just... <laughs> I'm a mess. Anyway, so I did end up finishing those two books. So it means that overall for Eurovision-a-thon, I've read a book for Sweden, which was A Man Called Uva. I have a vlog up for that, so I'll link it. I have read, obviously, all the books for this vlog. Hello. Italy, Australia, and Ireland. And I am currently reading Get a Life Chloe Brown for the UK and hopefully finishing that today, tomorrow, fingers crossed. I didn't end up reading My Tid and My Sister. I don't really write nonfiction. That ended up being all nonfiction and it wasn't actually, I thought it was gonna be um, like written by a group of different women, but it was just by the one woman. And she created this Instagram page for where she posted these sort of stories and I went to go look at it and it's since been deleted because they she and her sister who started it received a bit of controversy a lot of people felt like it was just highlighting the same sort of Aboriginal women and experiences and it wasn't very diverse and there were only sort of success stories in a way that conforms with like mainstream versions of success in Australian culture I guess not necessarily things that are inherent to Aboriginal culture and ways to succeed in their sort of groups. Looking back, I definitely see that. I didn't really notice it while I was reading it, but I do feel like that is the case. And I kind of wish we'd had more experiences and, and different ages and, and everything. But so I liked it. I felt like I learned a lot. I feel like there's a lot that people can get from it, but I guess there are also, there are also criticisms to go along with it, which I understand as well. So yeah, I still recommend picking it up if you're interested though. And then obviously I read one Anatoly. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment. And then I read One Hot Italian Summer and I really enjoyed that one. I gave it four stars. It was great in the end. It had a great build up. They had lots of chemistry. The sex scenes were delicious. Oh, that's such a gross way of saying that. I definitely feel like it's a very good, it's like a romance, but it's also a motivational story about grief and coming to terms with grief and learning to live with grief rather than focusing so much on overcoming it and not thinking about it. It's about learning to live with the things that have happened in your life and losing someone and yeah it was a really heartwarming a nice story and there was definitely a forbidden aspect to this romance so that was really great as well and I just really enjoyed it and this is my second Karina Harley book and I've enjoyed both so I'm very much looking forward to reading more books by her but yeah. If you're wanting a book with a really amazing guy that just like <laughs> makes every man you've ever met seem very lame and underwhelming, read this book. I'm, I'm talking crap here. I think I'm going to wrap it up here because I just, I don't even know how to function, let alone talk in front of a camera. It's, it's a time, but we persevere. So thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts are on them. If you're participating in this readathon, I'd absolutely love to know what you've been reading, for what countries, and if you have any predictions about how you think Eurovision is going to go, I would absolutely love to know. But yeah, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. But until then, bye!